Yeah, Russ, just how, how big was it for you guys as an offense to, to bounce right back after the, the early interception to go down and get that touchdown and kind of get going? Well, it was just one moment in time. We, we kept moving, we kept playing. We had we knew we were, had a great game plan. I think Co Coach Shadi did an amazing job of calling plays. I think the, the ball was spread around, which we've always said we wanted to be able to do. So many guys making plays. I mean, Tyler had a great game. DK had an unbelievable game. It's a great corner in Gilmore. Um, DK just keeps showing up. And then you have... You know, guys, uh, you know, like Freddie Swain getting his first touchdown. David Moore making unbelievable catch, and then Chris Carson. So, you know, it, it's it's a it was a special game because we kept battling. We knew it was going to come, uh, possibly down to the wire, just because of the style of game and just um, all the different things that that we were going to have to face. And um, there was a lot of great moments in there. And so, um, you know, it's very important. I've always said this to you guys: it's very important to be able to win games like this, to constantly win games, even though. It may be tight, even though it's close. It's the NFL, and it's never going to be easy. And uh, so I'm, I'm proud of, of what we were able to do. Joe Fan. Russ, what can you say about DK going up against Gilmore and, and ultimately getting the upper hand um, against the reigning defensive player of the year? Yeah, I, I just thought DK was unbelievable. He came into the week very focused. He's such, you know, we spent so much time together in the offseason. You know, it was quality time, the, the hours upon hours, you know, he isolated in a way, you know, just spending time together and, and it's showing up for him and, um, you know, showing up for us as a team. And so um, the great thing is that we get so many guys that can make plays. I mean, like you said, like you saw tonight. So, um, you know, I think DK's work ethic, I think DK's professionalism, uh, his focus, uh, all the way from the Zoom meetings to, us preparing one-on-one -on -one together, you know, to all the way to just who he is as a person, high character, just obviously to his talent as well. Um, it, it all makes plays, so it, 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 all, it all comes together as one. Corbin Smith. Hey, Russ. Uh, obviously, DK has made this come up kind of laughable, but there's usually a learning curve at the receiver position, and yet Freddie Swain, you just mentioned him a second ago, he's come in last week, recovered a fumble on special teams, made his first catch, and then gets his first touchdown today. What have you seen from him? It just doesn't seem like the stage is too bright for this kid as a sixth-round pick, and he's been able to come in and be an instant contributor for your team. Yeah, I think that's a great question, Corbin. I, you know, the first thing that popped up, you know, pop, popped up in my brain was when you were talking about that question was, I thought about the offseason. I mean, as soon as we drafted him, I mean, all the time that we spent on the Zoom calls, we, I just spent an hour before, an hour after. He was in every single one of them, dialed in and taking notes. We were on group messages with the rookies, and, uh, you know, he was helping lead that conversation with DJ Dallas and other guys. And, um, you know, I, I think that who he is, you know, how he played in college, he's transferred it uh, to the game. Uh, football is just football. You know, he knows it. He understands it. He processes it. Uh, he does a great job. He, uh, he takes it very serious on offense and defense, uh, you know, offense and special teams, I should say. And then, you know, I, I think more importantly, too, is, is that he's got great guys in the room with him. You know, you got guys like DK, Tyler, David Moore, and just great, great group of men in that room. And I think that he's um, molded in unbelievably well. Um, I mean, he's made some special plays for us uh, in the past two games. A.J. McCord. Russ, so one of the things David Moore told us after the game that he finds so so great about you is how you always believe, no matter what, you're the one picking players up. When you start the game, though, with a pick six, how do you mentally get back in gear, put that behind you to the point where you can also encourage the rest of your receivers? You know, A.J., I think it's a great question. I, I think, you know, obviously uh, that one play wasn't what we wanted, um, but there's a lot of game left. And I go straight to neutral. I've always talked about it, but you know, being neutral, you know, not being too high, not being too low, understanding that neutrality is going to allow, allow me to be successful, allow me to be successful more times than not. Um, I, I'm such a big believer in it, and I think it's helped my career, my life, everything else, um, from the greatest moments to the toughest moments, and just being to be to to remain uh, neutral is, is, is as allows allows me to just focus on the next play, the next moment, you know, and just being in it, you know, and I think that's been a key component of it and you know it's why well, i started a business and everything else around it you know i just i really believe in it and uh trevor moad and i've spent so much time around this concept that, that thought process for the past i don't know 10 11 years and um you know i i think ultimately too i think belief comes from experience as well it comes from uh having tough times in life uh you know at, at times when you don't have much you know or whatever it may be, and to, to realize that this is a game, that this is when, you're, when your dad's on his deathbed, there's understanding that, you know what, this is a, this is a gift, and why, why would I not believe? You know, why, why would I think any other way? And so I think that's a big component of just who I am. I think just God giving that belief, you know, every time. And so, 
You know, I, I think for me, just continue to try to speak life into guys, speak life into the situation, continue to talk about it, and I'm just grateful that I get to do it with, these, um, with, this, with this group of men. Thank you. Michael Sean. Uh, Russ, we heard you on the Dan Patrick show uh, yesterday. It's uh, quite a way to make your point, huh, on Sunday Night Football? <laughs> no, I think that, you know, Dan asked me a great, you know, question about, you know, what do I think? You know, I think... You know, I, I don't come to play this game to be second place. You know, I don't. You know, I, I think that you know, if I if I'm not thinking that way, you know, I'm crazy. You know, to, because you know, if you want to be great, you have to believe in who you are and what you have and and all the things that you do. I put tons of work in this game. You know, and I want to be the best in the world, but I can't do it alone. It's all the guys that we have around me, around me, and just they've done a great job of making plays. And it's really a special group of, of men that we have on offense and defense. And just I'm grateful to be able to play with, with such. Amazing guys, like I said earlier, you know, I think it's um, all part of the process, you know, and there's so many great guys, criminal great quarterbacks. I, you know, I mentioned, you know, obviously guys like Patrick Mahomes. I mentioned guys like Lamar and guys like Drew and, and guys like Tom, and I have a lot of respect for, you know, but if I'm not believing that, I, you know, that in taking the shot, you know what I mean, uh, then, then, you're, then, you're, then you're never going to hit it, you know what I mean? So I think that's always got to be your mindset. Thanks. Ben Arthur. Hey, Russ, you've talked about how you um, you feel like you're the best you've ever been in, in your career at this point. I think you said something about 70% of your potential or whatever. Just right now, you know, nine touchdowns through two games, you know, just really stellar, efficient play. You just feel like you're in a zone right now. Um, just how, just take me through how just, just your zone, well, do you, you feel like, like you're, you're at another, another year, year right now, now to, to start, start the season? season. Yeah, you know, I, I think that definitely in the zone. Um, locked in, focused, dialed in. My teammates are too. It's it's a great group of men, like I said. Um, you know, I, I, I've, I've been ready to play, uh, you know, since the last time we didn't play, you know, we had our last game in Green Bay. You know, I've just been, every day it's you know, my mindset, you know, just my performance team and everything else, just everything that we put into it is just getting ready, you know, and trying to be great. You know, I think that, um, you know, I have an obsession with, with, with this thought process of, of always trying to find more. You know, there's always, be on this constant quest for knowledge, be on this understanding that, you know, that I, I want to continue to push myself. And just the fundamentals, the simple things of the game, all the way to, uh, you know, the fun parts of the throwing the ball in certain spots and all that stuff too. Um, but I have a love and passion for this game. Um, you know, hours and hours and hours and hours of film, hours of time and just um, focus in the off season and everything else, it all adds up, you know? And, and uh, you know, nothing happens by accident. You know, you gotta put the work in. And I think that um, it's, just, it's just a start. I, you know, I haven't done anything yet. So it's just a start. We're, we got a long ways to go and we're just, we're just focused on the next you know, opportunity. Thanks. Greg Bell. Russ, I think these are the most touchdowns in a two-game stretch for you. What's working maybe perhaps more than in the past? Um, I think guys are just making tremendous plays. You know, I think that you know, Coach Shadi is doing an unbelievable job of calling plays. You know, we're, we're, we're mixing, the, mixing the ball you know, ball up in terms of who's catching it, who's touching it, uh, in terms of the running game and everything else. And I think the guys up front are doing a great job, man. They're giving me time to make throws. and. Uh, allow me to, to try to make some of these throws and stuff like that. So um, I just think it all comes down to the kind of guys you have in the room, you know, on the field and everything else. And like I said, I think Coach Shadi's doing a great job of calling the plays. I, you know, and, uh, you know, QB room's great, you know, with Gino and Danny and, and, and Austin Davis. And we spent a lot of time together, uh, guys like Dave Canales. We spent a lot of time together just working on it and uh, just spend a lot of time trying to be great. So uh, like I said, I, I think that it's just a start. Um, you know, and we want to continue to have a hot hand. We want to continue to deliver the ball to the right guy at the right time. Brady Henderson. Hey, Russ, we saw uh, DK get, you know, physical and, and kind of mix it up with Stephon Gilmore uh, tonight. Have you seen that, that kind of uh, nastiness from him before? Yeah, for sure. I think since the moment DK got here, he's always been passionate about the game, always been tough as nails, always been focused on uh, – you know, being an aggressor and owning his space, you know, as a player, you know, also, you know, I think also in the passing game, you know, he, he wants the opportunity. He wants to be great. He wants to be the best in the world of what he does. I think, you know, we got some, you know, 
uh, some of the top receivers, you know, in the game, you know, with, with Tyler and, and DK, you know, and uh, honestly, they, they need more respect in terms of just what they've been able to do consistently over and over and over again. You know, DK has been unbelievable and, you know, what he's been able to do as a rookie coming in last year and then, and then obviously what he's been able to do this year so far. And then guys like Tyler Lockett, I mean, for the past, I don't know however many years we played together and it feels like forever, but just, you know, he's been, he's been unstoppable, you know, so just, you know, like I said, though, or, you know, to be honest with you, um, obviously they're super talented, but it's, it's the men they are, you know, it's, it's who they are and it's the work that they put in and it's the, it's the, it's the attention to detail and it's their faith in it, in it all. And so it's been a pretty cool process to, to have such great receivers that I get to be around. Thanks. Mark Schwartz. Russ, what's it like to, what's the feeling like when you put a ball up there for DK Metcalf in full stride against one of the great defenders in our game and it falls perfectly where you want it and he goes on and scores. And then you do it again in the little corner of the end zone by the pylon to a guy who was a seventh round pick. How hard have you worked to make throws like that? And what's the feeling when it actually just converts? You know, uh, Mark, I think it's a great question. You know, that people talk about 10,000 hours to, to be great. You know, I, I feel like I've spent 30,000 30, hours I mean, just on those type of plays. And you, know, you spend so much time, you know, in the off season and just, you know, like I said, the obsession with doing it, you know, over and over and over and over again and just working at it and working at it and perfecting it. If it's not perfect, let's do it again. Hey, let's get that rep again. Let's do this right. Let's do this. And um, those guys have completely bought into the thought process of it all. They've completely bought into the, the work ethic of it all. Um, they are who they are in terms of just as men, like I said earlier. And I think, I think ultimately, um, you know, God's given me a gift, you know, and just I want to continue to use it, you know, and just um, give guys a chance to make a play and they keep making plays. And it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I, you know, I always uh, think back to baseball. You know, people always ask me, what's a greater feeling, hitting a home run or, or throwing a touchdown? I've thrown a lot more touchdowns in my professional career than home runs. <laughs> uh, but both feelings are amazing. And I think, um, you know, I just love winning. You know, I really, I love winning. I love, I love the process of winning. I love the process of the week. I love that more than the end result even. And so that's where I think it all you know, comes from. Thanks so much. Thank you. Two more for Russell, Art Teal, and then Jackie Montgomery. Uh, Russ, last possession, you guys were uh, third and one. You went deep to lock it, overthrew him. Uh, take us through that play. Pete said that there were a couple options you had on that that went away, and it, the Pats took it a defense away. Can you explain how that play went? Yeah, we almost had it, Art. I mean, it was so close. I mean, we've hit, we've hit that many a times before in the past. Um, so we just we just barely uh, we just barely missed that one. Uh, that would have been a pretty special play too, Tyler. They make so many plays, you know, all day, and so I tried to give them a chance. Um, you know, so, it, it, you know, they, they went cover zero. We almost had it, and uh, that was basically it. I mean, uh, they, they made a good play, you know, and so uh, we, we, we took our chance, and we almost had it. Thanks. Yeah, of course. Hey, Russ, with the incredible touchdown passes that you had and then the game ending on the one-yard line, what was missed with no fans in the stands tonight? <laughs> You know, Jackie, not having any fans is tough here. You know, just you miss the fun of it all. You miss this game is meant to be played in front of thousands and thousands of people. It's so special, you know, and uh, but at the same time, you know, you, uh, no matter where you play it, you, know, you got to love it just as much. And the feelings and the emotions and everything else, it just it all comes out of you just uh, playing the game. And so I, I think that, um, you know, today, you know, with, you know, Sunday night football, we're so used to having so many people out there and uh, fans going crazy and, the, and everything else. And we obviously miss, you know, our 12s, you know, and how much they mean, mean to us. Uh, they always travel so well, too. We obviously, home games are always the best in the world. Um, so just praying for, for healing, praying for a way to, to, to see our fans again, just because that's the fun part of this game, too, as well. Um, I know it's fun for, for entertainment and everything else, but um, just, and just praying for the world to get better and, and, and to make that happen fast. But... I think it's just been, a, it was a great game today, like you said, you know, I, th I think as we talked about just earlier, it's um, that last play, our defense making that stop was an unbelievable stop, I mean, key moment. We needed that. That's championship caliber football when you have to make a stop. Sure enough, we did. Thank you, Russell. Thank you, guys. Go Hawks. Yep.